This is the first time we followed an ambulance. Hey, welcome to Thailand. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. To China. Hi. 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 Nice, Hi. Meeting nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Let's yeah. hop on to our vehicle. Yeah. Okay. The traffic is that terrible now. Yeah, this is our peak hour? Yeah, this is peak hour. So, I thank yes. you for inviting us. Yes, and sure. Tell us more about this. Uh, what can we expect today? What are the things going to be around? Um, you guys will meet a group of people who is, um, how can I say, good Samaritans. Well, um, they are volunteer. They're all volunteer. If something happens on the road, no matter it's an um, accident or fighting or whatever, they act as a um, volunteer rescue team. They have their own car and they dedicate their own car to be um, ambulance. Actually, there are so many people. All of them are spread all over the countries. Oh, okay. Tonight, we will meet a group of one, one group. So what are these people background? Are they just civilians or do they work as medical people? Do they work as police? Do they work as firemen? What are these? Or they're just normal? They're ordinary people. They're just like um, people who want to dedicate to the society. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัส
in an actual case, is not enough. Okay. Let's say if you use this color, we will spray. And what is this spraying? Any, any to alcohol. With the safety they have, it's minimum. But that's what they have and they have to work with. But they need help, you know, to bring this to a further level. They need more safety. They need to understand more. So now we know exactly what they have and what they require. So with their funding, which is already so low and all that, so what we are going to do is let's go down to a, a shop, a supermarket, and see what is really available in the supermarket, easily accessible. What for DIY them. items they can use. DIY items, items they can yeah. use, and then pick up the right items and for guide them, them through the right and methods. And guide them to the right methods and tell them that these are the things they can use to make it work for them. Let's see what they have. So we need to get for them bleach of Clorox or anything that's close. That is... won't be potent enough. This one? Yeah. Yeah, that we need to. Perfect. So we're trying to find like bleach for them. Uh, they don't have pure bleach here at the moment, so especially Clorox. Yeah, so we can use like try with uh, how to say uh, hard surface bleach. We see it should work. It's the best thing that they have here. It might do the job. And then we got some uh, paper towels for them to help with their wipings and all, and see if maybe they are using something now already, or we give them some more ideas along the way. Uh. We need to get a hard brush for today. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be applying our BR Shield antimicrobial product. So it's basically a surface protection. Uh, how we apply it is through a misting process. The idea behind applying this product is to prevent any cross-contamination of viruses. A space, especially like a gym, where you have different groups of people touching the same surfaces. With this coating, what it does is if anyone is affected or is uh, infected with any virus, when they touch a surface, the next person who touches the same surface doesn't get affected. What it does is it inactivates any virus, viral load that comes in contact with this uh, VR Shield coating. In a space like this, uh, high touch areas include door handles, uh, your weights, uh, the different machines, your you know tables, meeting tables, the concierge, the resting areas, sofas. So all of that constitutes a high touch area. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So in a typical premise like this, we need to ensure that the surface has no dust accumulation and all of that so that the coating can bond properly. So the first step in any premise is to prepare the surfaces. So what we do is we physically wipe down the surfaces and thereafter we mist it. So BR Shield is a product that's been around for a while. We get this product from the US. In fact, it was uh, manufactured in the 1960s as an antimicrobial product. But during COVID, uh, we also realized that this product that we have in our hands is actually effective against coronavirus. So what it does is it prevents any cross-contamination. So during COVID, we tested our BR Shield aggressively with uh, different labs, and we realized the results were really good, and in fact, it kills 99.9% .9 of all viral load.
normally how we do disinfection for vehicles. We don't take anything to chance. We always think the worst case situation, all right? Because they are volunteers, they are risking their life, and that also we teach them how to stop cross contamination and the right things to use if they can change in the future for their own thing. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> all right. So normally, you all wear gloves. Okay. We call it primary. So this is primary glove. One. This secondary glove. This is two. This is your skin. Never leave. Always stay with you until the last minute. Okay. When he went just now, the first thing he did, after you see a patient, you are coming in. But you go in there, you touch your back straight away. Oh. Yeah. No glove. Okay. Problem? Whatever you have, you put there. <laughs> For the back, you don't disinfect. We go there, we first wear on the mask. Stop. Your mask, this mask, no problem. Then we take this out. Alright? Now you take this and this. Now when you spray with this, Kai, you can explain to them. Alright? Alright? And then you wipe. Yep. Okay, that is one. Then you are taking this. Okay. When you spray, and then you are wiping again. Okay. But this cloth will always transfer, transfer all the germs okay. from here. You will go to here. Although there is alcohol, ah. but maybe the germ hanging here. Never touch alcohol. Touch the thing. We don't use cloth. Normally, what we do, we use paper towel. Okay. So paper towel. So when you when you do the cleaning, once you have sprayed, you have your trash bag here. You throw everything inside. Take this, wipe, and throw inside. Okay. So whatever. Now you see, I'm wearing two gloves. I finish everything. Take so this one. I put back. This is out, this is done, this I put here, and I put this back. Now once all this is finished, now when I take out my glove, first glove I will take out is always this. Like that. Why? Don't touch my skin, don't touch anything. Then finish everything, when you take this, say you throw in a bin. This glove come out the same way. Here, take out, slowly take out this, and then this. Inside. Turn it upside down and then throw it. Okay. Now, they clean the scene. If that same method is used to cleaning the vehicles, it's not 100% clean. And these vehicles go from different places to different places on a daily use. So I think we can guide them to that, that level that they need to reach or how they can maintain something good enough with household items where they can be safe. Okay, so as my colleague has, uh, Chan has shown about how we clean the rear after they come out from the hospital and everything, so as they move to the front, I'm going to show you all how we do the front of the cabin. So, same thing as the front, you still need your two gloves, the mask, same PPE, we follow from the back to the front. So we assume that there's no one in the front of the car, so we open the door fully, not half, not what, we open fully, give enough space, right? So, same thing, in the front of the cabin, right, what we need to clean on the driver's side will be the door handles, the window seal here, the steering wheel, signal lights here, and all the high touch points here. As you go, all right, and then for the front you need to wipe, all right, all need to wipe. Spray like a chat, yang lihat, naik tutul cut. All the points you have to wipe. All, as long the driver or the passenger will be touching everywhere. We will be cleaning everything up. Tuk cut, just to check it all. In the inside, we don't know if we are sitting or if we are touching something or not. So once the inside is done, right? What we do is the last, the last contact point will be the door handle. Okay. I've met so many volunteers around the world doing these kind of things. But I've never met a team this dedicated, this passionate in their job and what they do. And you can see they're not tired, they're smiling all the way. I mean, they show they want to do it. Yeah. It's not like somebody forced them here or what. It's initiative they took. It would be really nice to see them actually grow bigger. It would be amazing. Okay, we have brought some stuff for them to share with them. 
and this is more like what we have in Singapore, what we bought in Thailand for them and everything for them to use. Hi guys. Hi. 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 This is some stuff for all. Okay. This we have the N95 mask you can use. Just a thing. Yeah, just. <laughs> then we have more rolls for you all to use. You can use, you can dispose, right? That's good. That's fine. Here we have a new pump for you all, right? Then here we have the shoe covers. Shoe covers you can use to wrap your shoes, right? These are the Tyvek suits, right? For if the place is like very dirty or anything, you can use this for full covering as well, okay. right? Here we have portable lights for you all to use, right? Battery operated, battery oh. light. Oh. Oh. If it's dark, you put the battery light. Oh. So sometimes good to have portable light. No need power, battery. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. BR Shield is an uh, antimicrobial that lasts for 180 days. There's a base ingredient behind it that essentially is quaternary ammonia. And the way it works is technically it's a non-leaching product. So what this means is that it just lays that dormant until any particular microbe comes onto surface and then it fights the war with them. So it doesn't go out there and fight against microbes. So that ensures a longer duration of effectiveness. This product is not new. It has been there for 2003 during SARS. I would say in Singapore, we have covered more than 2 million, 3 million square feet using this product. Uh, we were the first one to show out a marketing letter even before COVID was announced here in Singapore. That was in February. The pandemic gave us a good head start and we went into different kinds of products which were antimicrobial treatment for the pandemic. We have ready-to-use uh, spray bottles, so we sell them in 500 ml bottles, or if you want, we can buy them in bulk of 5 litres. This is how our uh, shipments are prepared. So essentially, this will include details of the uh, dilution rate so that our distributor knows how to prepare the chemical for usage, as well as the um, manufacturing date and then the expiry date. We also supply the same product to Hong Kong. Uh, so they are a distributor for, we have a distributor for Hong Kong and for Taiwan. So the demand for that is, is, is still prominent. While in Singapore it's dwindling, the, the cases and the demand for it in Hong Kong and Taiwan is still high. First time we followed an ambulance and we had a we really know how medical worker works right now, how tense they are when they're rushing to a site. Um, they drove faster than a plane, I can say for once, because we were flying inside there. But when they reached there, they were calm, composed. Look at their response time at the incident. When we had a response time, it was so fast. 
And I think in all that uh, passion of doing and rescuing the person and you know making sure that he that guy gets medical help as fast as possible, I think they do forget about disinfection or even personal safety. But I think sometimes they just need to be told that personal safety is as important for them to carry on the job the next day. So this is where we go back to where they say they investigate or interrogate the patient who they are helping. What's wrong with him? Does he have any dis disease? But right now they can't know. So are they going to carry HIV or hepatitis B, C? We won't know. Now comes to the public safety or the personal safety of us. That's where they have to move in. The second team is supposed to come in and clean this up. They can actually, while that is happening, prep the items that they need, get it ready, check the items, and then once out, they can slowly come in and they have, they are really prepped by then ready to get the job done. So like how we have a decon box, I think we should write for them a decon box and they should just carry a small box with them. When they reach this kind of place, small incident like this, finish it off. But their job is beautiful. These are all civilians. Some are school teachers, some are basically housewives. I mean, we do have volunteers all around the world, but I've never seen volunteers 24 hours and leaving their job, their family, and working for this and doing this, it's amazing. I think their course is brilliant. They want to do, they want to be here, and that's amazing. That's me. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They have one of the largest landfill there. This is how many years of the This is definitely a gold pot. 